Hello and welcome to another video in our series on reptiles brought to you by myself, Mark Perpetua of Reptile Encounters in conjunction with Hudson Valley Reptile and Rescue. And today's episode, as you can see, is all about rattlers. The rattlesnake in front of you right now is a timber rattlesnake, a rattlesnake native to the east side of the United States. But one of the things I want to point out about rattlers is that they are part of a group of snakes known as pit vipers. And as a pit viper, it has a couple of adaptations that classify them that way. First off, you might see in the front of his face what look like two extra large nostrils. Those are heat sensing pit organs. They actually detect the heat coming off of warm blooded prey that they might feed on like rodents and birds. It's said that they can detect temperature differences as little as one tenth of a degree. And in a room like this at 70 degrees, my body at 98.6, this snake can easily feel the warmth of the body and my presence around it. As vipers, however, they have long hollow fangs. Vipers are snakes that have fangs that are so long, they are connected to a specialized bone that hinges the fang up against the roof of the mouth when they close. When they open, that fang can hinge out and that allows them to inject the venom deep into another animal's body tissue. They smell with their tongue like all snakes and at nighttime zero in with the heat sensing pit organs and a little chipmunk passing by probably stands very little chance from an ambush predator like the timber rattler. But take a look at that rattle going right now. That is the classic sound that lets you know he feels disturbed. He doesn't want to be bothered. And even though he's been rattling and he doesn't seem too happy right now, you'll notice he's not turning around and attacking me. One of the early myths about rattling was it was a warning of a rattlesnake. He's not going to attack. If you keep your distance, the snake recognizes you as something large and dangerous. And I know it sounds kind of cliche, but it's true. They're more afraid of us than we are of them. He has no idea how toxic his venom is towards something as large as a human. And he's doing everything with that rattle to convince us to keep away so he doesn't have to bite. But that rattle is made up of several segments, as they're called, which are modified scales. A baby rattlesnake is born with what's called a button. It's a little tiny scale at the very tip of the tail, but by itself, it cannot make any noise until that snake hits its first shed. When that snake hits its first shed, it exposes the second segment, and now there's two pieces of the rattle that interlock loosely, allowing it to bang against each other on the inside, and that's what makes the noise. There's nothing loose in there like a baby rattle, but every time this snake sheds its skin, a new scale or segment is added and it creates the buzzing sound that we hear. So the timber rattler is just one example of many rattlesnakes found throughout the US. But rattlesnakes are not the only snakes capable of shaking their tail. Yeah, even a snake like a rattlesnake can sometimes be confused with other snakes. And it would seem pretty impossible because, I mean, how could you not notice that rattle making that noise? The snake I'm holding right here is called a gopher snake. It's a snake of the western half of the U.S., and it is one of the largest snakes we have, growing up to about seven feet long. But they live in many areas that also have rattlesnakes, and this gopher snake has also adapted to putting on a good display to convince you to back up. One of the things it will do is shake his tail. And in a dry environment, dead leaves, dead grass, that can actually create a buzzing sound. Maybe not as loud as an actual rattle, but that's okay. While it's shaking its tail and looking intimidating, it also has the ability to hiss. When most snakes hiss, they expel air in one loud puff or sound. But in a gopher snake, they have a valve that fits over the top. It's a membrane over the top of their windpipe that causes a resonating sound, more like a creating a somewhat of a rattling noise. And that's one of the reasons why sometimes even a snake that's non-venomous 
can be confused as venomous. They're putting on a show, trying to convince you they're bigger and badder than they actually are. One of the places gopher snakes are found is in the Southwest. And we brought with us today one more rattlesnake to show you from the Southwest part of the United States. Yeah, our last rattlesnake is the biggest one we have for this series. And this is called a Southern Pacific rattlesnake. They're not the largest, but they're definitely one of the larger rattlesnakes, easily growing over 40 inches and sometimes up to four feet long. There are some bigger ones, however. The Western Diamondback is a popularly known rattlesnake, and they can grow well over six feet and sometimes as much as seven feet. The Eastern Diamondback, however, of the Southeast part of the US, those are the biggest of the rattlesnakes. Not only do they grow up to seven feet long, they're extremely heavy. And some of the largest Eastern Diamondbacks can reach weights at nearly 20 pounds. But the other property about venomous snakes to understand, including rattlesnakes, is not all venom is equal. There are many different types of rattlesnakes throughout the U.S., and many of them have different venom properties, adding to the difficulty of treating their bites. For example, that timber rattlesnake, while they do get big, they're not a snake that is considered life-threatening in most cases. They do produce a hemotoxic venom that causes a lot of pain and swelling, so you will definitely want to get medical attention, but it's not one of the most dangerous venoms in the rattlesnakes. If you go south, there are types of timber rattlesnakes often referred to as cane breaks. And even though they're the same species, they live in a different region with slightly different adaptations and an extra property of their venom that's been referred to as the cane break toxin, making their venom much stronger, much more dangerous than their northern cousins. And the southern Pacific rattlesnake might be one of the more venomous of all rattlesnakes. Not only does it have the hemotoxic venom that I just mentioned attacking the bloodstream and causing hemorrhaging and swelling, but they even have neurotoxic properties, which is mostly more common in the cobra family. And neurotoxic venom causes paralysis. It attacks your nervous system, causing your heartbeat to slow and stop and can either inter interfere with your breathing. So as you can see, Rattlesnakes, while they have many similarities, also have lots of differences that make it real interesting when studying the entire group. In fact, one of the new things that's being discovered about rattlesnakes is kind of a reverse natural selection. The rattles first evolved as a way of them convincing larger animals, especially hooved animals, not to tread on them. And of course, those that rattled survived. Natural selection, they passed on their traits. But nowadays, because people are overhunting them, yes, in places like Texas, they hold what are called rattlesnake roundups in which they, out of fear, overhunt rattlesnakes out in the mountains, out of their dens. But they locate those rattlesnakes by hearing them rattle. The few rattlesnakes that remain calm and don't rattle, they don't give themselves away. And those are their survivors that will then breed in the springtime passing on that behavior as a genetic trait. So it is possible that you're gonna come upon a rattlesnake and it doesn't rattle. And keep in mind when they're hunting, they of course don't wanna rattle and scare their prey away. So it's not true, however, that rattlesnakes will always rattle before they strike. But if you use some common sense when you're out hiking and in the field around rattlesnake territory, stay on open trails, don't stick your hand under places where they might hide. You'd literally have to step on one in order for it to bite you. Hopefully, hopefully you got an idea that even with them rattling and even with the dangers of the type of venom the Southern Pacific possesses, you were able to see how calm they are when they're treated with respect. Of course, in the wild, I don't advise you go along poking them with sticks or trying to pick them up. And if you need a picture, four or five feet away, you're a safe distance. Just make sure no sick selfies with the rattlesnakes. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about rattlesnakes today. I enjoyed being able to share them with you. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, once again, please leave some comments and uh, look forward to sharing more reptiles with you in the future.